Newcastle's there, Billy Head. The goal, Chris Billy Huddersfield Town. The most famous goal of Chris Billy's life. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. Champion Steve Simonson's boots now. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the frame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Huddersfield Town are promoted. Stephen Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance. Hello and welcome to the Andy Takes That Chance season review. Yes, the masochistic tendencies of one of your favourite podcasts is fully on show as we rake over the coals of the season just gone. We promise bad memories, post-traumatic stress and a hell of a bad time in what is going to be a four-parter. First up in part one, as we celebrate each separate, sorry, not celebrate, separate each section into managerial periods, we have the snake to the nagel mongoose. It's Dan, the ginger ogre porrit. And with Pozza is a man who no doubt was enjoying the fine weather and cricket season before he was rudely interrupted to talk about the football. It's Baldilocks and the three hairs himself. It's Richard Kosik Osmala. How are we doing, boys? Yeah, we're just... Uh... We didn't want the call, if I'm being honest to you, Matt. Well, I, I can, can't speak for Pos, but <laughs> we're hoping it won't go happen. But it, we're here and, uh, yeah. We've got I do apologise, mate, but we do make these <laughs> silly commitments in life, don't we? Um, okay. Right, okay. So this this season has, has aged all three of us terribly. So I hope people are listening to this uh, rather than watching us on YouTube as well. Plus, we have more money from the Talkspot ads if you listen to it. So. That'd be nice if you did. So let's roll back to what feels like a lifetime ago. It's the summer of 2023. We're still basking in the happiness of the Neil Warnock Saviour Act. It's sunny. We're enjoying the drinks. Cos is enjoying the cricket. There's optimism in the air as town's first foreign owner enters the building in Kevin Nagel. Following him is Jake Edwards, who seems a very smart and articulate CEO. And then the big announcement, Neil Warnock is coming back. Everything seems to fall into place. Town fans rejoice. The playoffs are even mentioned by some, not us. But the summer is slow. It turns out Town are under FFI sanctions because of the previous threats of admin and that Town can't spend much money. Warnock is given transfer control, but not a lot happens. A reserve keeper, a backup right back, then Ben Wiles for a reported fee of just under a million. And then Delano Bergsog joins us late on as well. All of us on the podcast were saying, look, it's not enough. The players did well at the end of last season, but the squad lacks depth. It lacks quality in the forward lines, and we needed a striker desperately. All of us said it on the pod, but the words of an ogre travelled far and wide, and particularly well on social media. Pozza, you seem to spark the blue touch paper a little bit with uh, with your comments on, on social media, and it did sort of capture the... Uh, the eyes of uh, the owner himself. Yeah, we were a bit of a strange one, that, to be fair, mate, because it kind of it kind of came from nowhere. Um, it originally came from, I'm having a look today, actually. Uh, it, it actually came from some, it, it was just a random fan who, who was t- quoted um, one of the tweets from, from the official account, basically, just saying, you know, the squad weren't great and, you know, we've, we've lost players, et cetera, et cetera, not really brought anybody in. And it was actually Nagel that replied to him originally just saying, I think the quote was something like the chess game, you know, we haven't got as chess pieces out of the box um, just yet. And I said, uh, it looks like we've not even, no, sorry, Nagel said the chess game's not started. And I said, from where I'm sitting, we haven't got our pieces out of the box, which was obviously meant to be kind of a bit of a joke. Uh, but it kind of all spiralled from there. Um, you know, he kind of came back to me a couple of times with, you know, saying that was wrong and, the, you know, the, they had some great people at the club. Um, obviously, he, he was new to ownerships. He could only basically go on what he was told. Um, he started talking about wages and I think I corrected him on, on some figures that he'd put out. It was a losing one, wasn't it? He'd use the, the ones from yeah. the previous season rather than the... Yeah. yeah, I think we discussed it, didn't we? I think we discussed it. rather than the one just gone um, and it kind of just stopped it kind of just stopped at that and then it were when the um, 
I think with the cows I had a, a Q and A with him at Magic Rock, and again someone else totally. I don't even know who this person is, but it just puts something about oh, it'll be brass knuckles between you know Pozza and, and Kev. Um, to which again, Kev jumped in. I I didn't even see. It. I think I don't think I even replied to that. I just kind of you know one of those things that makes you laugh. But you know he'd come in and he, he kind of went along the lines of you know uh, I think the quote were uninformed and negative people and that you know that were way off and, and out of line basically. Um, so at that point I thought you know I, I feel like I have to respond. I feel like I've got a right to respond. Why why not? You know I didn't I didn't steam in and, and give him any abuse. It was just a if you look back it were it was just a, a debate that, that you'd have with with a fan. You know whether he's an owner or a fan. You know it's social media. You know you've got a right to to kind of put things out there and I just kind of put my 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 feelings forward and. You know, he kind of again took umbrage on it and, and, and said that I were that were wrong. And, and I think at the end of it, it will just you know we'll see where we are in May. Um, but it all seems to have snowballed quite ridiculously, really, for for what it was. Obviously, yeah, I think there was everyone a, a else breakdown did. in a breakdown in American versus British humour, maybe in there. As yeah, well, and I mean, obviously, he were he were he were going to defend the club. He just he just bought the club, and he was just going to yeah, you know he was him. defending it. That. Yeah, yeah, and I think the, the whole kind of you know ginger Roger versus. Um, Kevin Nagel thing were, were kind of blown out of proportion by other people. Obviously, you know, people chip in and they had the usual happy clappers, you know, telling me that I was wrong and all that. And I was just like, look, this is just, this is what I've just seen what I've seen. I think the, the thing that kind of got my, my back up uh, mostly, and I have I have discussed this with, with Nagel afterwards, you know, after the season, we have had uh, private conversations. So, we, you know, we have kind of moved on. Bros now, this. I uh, yeah, bros. Uh, I won't say we, I won't say we were friends, but we were, you know, we, we've got a better understanding of the situation. And, and from my point of view, it was more that he'd come in, he'd not seen much of Huddersfield Town, you know, he openly admitted that he only bought it within what eight to ten weeks, and yeah. you know, you're kind of disrespectful that he's trying to tell someone who's watched forty six games last year, you know, that he knew more than what I knew um, from from what he'd seen and from what I'd seen. He just kind of came across as that, and obviously, you know, time rumbles on and the season went how it went and. You know, you know, he, he kind of messaged me afterwards saying that, you know, I hoped that we would be poor, so I'd be proven right. And obviously I said, no, I, I would have been more than happy to be proven wrong, um, given how the season went. But yeah, it, would, it was just one of those things, mate. I think it kind of got blown out of all proportion. Um, and then Two obviously, passionate blokes having a chat, eh? Yeah, pretty much, mate. And I think he, he, he obviously died down and then the, then the diary came out where he kind of name-checked me alongside some fans. I love that. I love yeah, that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it. It's one and of obviously them, some... Know? Some some someone may have uh, orchestrated the uh, well. It was the the Stan song um, done by Adam Jarrell. Was uh, you know we uh, we may have based or me and Thomas Bradshaw may have based Stan on somebody <laughs> who uh, who looks particularly like you as well. Just yeah, as a joke as well. But yeah, but yeah, when that kind of when obviously you mentioned that. And... Again, I think the, the, the thing that I took umbrage there, he, he kind of lumped me in with a couple of fans who were on social media. Um, yeah. And again, everybody can can have their own opinions and put it across in the way that the, they want to put it across. But they were kind of personally abusive towards him and everything like that. And, and I would never like that. And I think it just a little bit, it kind of annoyed me a little bit that I'd kind of been lumped in into those. I know they came out afterwards and said, it were, it were banter and stuff. And I, I no doubt it was, you know. Um, and like I say, we've, we've kind of drawn the... You know, drawing a line under it all, shall we say? And you know, I just kind of explained to him that look, it only ever came from a place I want in Huddersfield Town to be the best it can be. And at that point, I didn't feel that that we were. And you were trying to tell me that we were, and I was saying no, we're not. And it just kind of just went from there, really. I reckon if you two sat down and had a pint, or, or if you got invited to the uh, the chairman's afternoon tea, I reckon you'd get on actually really well. And probably two yeah, quite it's... similar personalities, aren't you? Just. Uh... With, I think with so, different mate, views. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, potentially, yeah. And I do enjoy a good score. So, you know, if there's an invite going, I'll be there. <laughs> Especially if it's free. You'll be oh, there if it's free, it. mate, 100%. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right, Cosy, let's bring you in here because Warnock's had his say recently, hasn't he, in um, in York uh, doing his uh, doing his tour, which looks incredibly entertaining. And I, I do kind of regret not going to one of those because they do look like a lot of fun. Um, and he's had his say on the fitness of the players recently, more worth it than an all said or intimated at some point that the players lacked fitness at one stage through the season. Um, you stuck up for Warnock a bit here, didn't you? Um, citing, you know, he's done this wherever he's been, and you know, and it didn't work. It didn't turn out too badly for Cardiff. No, I just felt I've not enjoyed. Obviously, generally relegation, but I've not enjoyed the fallout. As soon as obviously Brighton right had his say, you knew Warnock would come back, and he were eerily quiet. Obviously, waiting for his tour to restart before he. Back and it's just 
it's just a messy situation really in that as well there. Uh, it was interesting. I think. Uh, I think what's really interesting is the fan base. I think it's really split. Uh, I saw, uh, you know, we a lot of people, obviously, Warnock fans. Uh, a lot of people. I mean, I suppose if you go in on Twitter, being engaged in that as well, really uh, interesting. But Ollie uh, put put a message out last night. Now I was surprised how many likes it got, and he the kind fish. Of, yeah, I yeah, saw that. He, it was interesting, wasn't it? And he criticised Warnock, and that got a lot of likes. Did that as well, but ultimately, we just yeah. As soon as Brighton Knight said that, he was always going to fight back on that as well. But it's, I just think it's an easy thing to, to say, and it the fitness and stuff like that as well. It did seem very visible, didn't it? A lot of them games last season that we were running out of gas and stuff. But yeah, some, we did, we did, we did. I think mentally we were quite fatigued as well, wasn't it? And and that you can't really blame Neil Warnock for any mental, fit, fit, you know, fatigue. I mean, no, but I, 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 one thing I remember, sorry, Matt, just to come back in, just to, remember the start of the season with that incredible day. I don't know where they were at, but you were absolutely silent it down, blowing a gale, so much in the oh, back Plymouth. of it. But yeah, Oh, yeah, it, down in Cornwall. Yeah, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, everyone in good Happy spirits. Happy or something, so wasn't it? Yeah. You know what? Because we'd stayed up and worn up with a man and we got a new owner, I don't think anyone were like, oh, that's a bit village on amateur. I did, to be fair, I think a few people obviously felt, pointed out then you know, the ridiculous uh, friendly wins and stuff. But it's what Warnock does. And then I think everyone just looked yeah. kind of, yeah, he'll be fine. And obviously everyone thought he was staying for the season at that time. And that was also, people were happy to, you know, to say, but obviously, you know, it pans out on that as well. But no, I've not really enjoyed the spat, to be honest, with Brighton and Warnock. And I hope kind of what he said in York on Friday is kind of the cause because as a club, we need to move on. But he was always going to come back. And he has a right to reply, Matt. Yes, he does. Yeah, of course he does. I mean, we played three non-league teams. We played Tavistock, Bodmin Town, and um, Liskiard. And we won thirty-one against Liskiard. And the best goal of that game was scored by them. It were an absolute thunderball. Yeah, <laughs> it was a beauty yeah. see that. Um, and we only really had two proper friendlies against Stockport and here and Vane. Me and Paws went yeah. to to here yeah. and And we looked quite good in both those games. You know, remember, remember looking quite good in both games. Um, I mean, history's against Neil Warnock a little bit here. Chris Wilder was very scathing in his comments about squad fitness when he replaced Warnock at Middlesbrough. Corberan said similar when we got Danny Ward in season one. He said it was because he hasn't been training properly at, at Cardiff. And and the thing is, maybe when you let Warnock do Warnock things, you've got to sort of buy into it a hundred percent because he's very different as a manager. We this is why we love Neil Warnock because he's different to all the other managers out there. All the other managers are, are very big on fitness, very big on uh, stats, numbers, red zones, green zones, etc. Neil Warnock goes a little bit more by feel, and he's very big on getting togetherness. You know, in terms of the squad, the pub. Uh, you know, from what he explains, the pub and the the golf is good because that's that's pretty much Neil Warnock's Swedish island. You know, Alan, Alan David Wagner, isn't it? You know, that that's all good. It brings people together. I've got no issue with any of that. Um, but I think that my main issue really is if you invest in a Neil Warnock preseason, you've got to invest more. In Neil Warnock than seven games because that when when Neil Warnock leaves he's so different to the vast majority of other managers that the whole house of cards can come tumbling down at any point well, because no one does the same thing as him. The big problem for me, Matt, was that Aaron Ming game. I just remember Kyle London scoring. I'm thinking we've got a huge problem here because Kyle London is a guy. I was thinking, can we get him starting now? Is it is this what it's come to now? Or without desperate yeah. that this guy we're really going to hope that he does really well because. He, had he, a good played right. he played all right that game. I went to Stockport right. and he scored a nice goal there, but I'm just yeah. thinking, danger, danger, the red lights on the, the windows shutting, we haven't got a striker and we haven't got a striker in. And, yeah. you know, I, I just thought we were in massive trouble. And, yeah, we'll talk about Pegs, I'm sure, later on. But, I mean, he's a winger, not a striker, at Matt. And, yeah. and but for us to kind of be fudging that, it was a huge, honestly, just an error. And the big thing was, Matt, obviously, that the press conference where he had his say and, you know, the players that were supposed to be after with Zach, what was his name at Millwall? One, 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 Jack Fleming won it, one, but yeah, that it was, I, I was just so more alarmed. It wasn't really the fitness thing for me was the issue. It was we were desperate for some forward players and we know Danny Ward's history and stuff. It was, it, I just felt it was a, a real issue. And again, I was just pinning me up as bad as it is with our lack of forwards. We've got new one, I can he'll keep us up. Yeah, yeah. And, and that didn't last very long. But I think what we'll do is we, we, we have a couple of awards to do. And the first award, I mean, a lot of people probably think we shouldn't do this, but we, we have a player of the season award every year, don't we? And I think when people say you shouldn't do it because we've been relegated, I, I don't really like that. I think 
there are still players who do play quite well during a, even during the bad seasons, and I think it's it's fair to give them a, a, a doff of the cap to from time to time. I mean, you can sit there and slander a plenty of players for, throughout this campaign, but there are a couple who've done quite well. Any stick out for you, Paws as player of the year? Well, it's an obvious choice, and it? it's got to be it's got to be Helic. Um, Helic. You, you 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 compare him to everybody else, and only person that potentially even gets close is probably Brody Spencer, and he only played half a season. So you know that kind of tells its own story. You could probably make a case for for the Sarber Thomas if you look at his if you look at his stats in comparison to across the you know the rest of the championship. I know he were kind of number one in quite a lot of the the stats, but I think I think when you look at uh, time squad as a whole, you can't look you past Elliot, can you? You mean he, he played his centre half, he was top scorer, he got nine goals. Uh, which is ridiculous, really, for a, a centre half in in any team, let alone for a team that's struggling. But he were kind of consistent as well. I, I can't really think of any shocking games that he had. He were, he were very much a, a seven out of ten, at least every week. Um, whereas other other players were were decent for a little bit and then kind of dropped off. Or they had a few good games here and there, and then you know whatever happened happened. But yeah, you, you, for me, you can't look, you can't look any further than Alec, really. Cosy, I was on the Sauber Thomas train for a player of the season up until the probably the week before Swansea, and then things sort of came off the the wheels came off the tracks a little bit with with that, and we saw what happened. And I I don't think you can look past Helic really, unless you've got a curveball that you want to throw in some random. Or... Yeah, it's really awkward one, Matt, for me because it's really hard, isn't it? Because you've got to go and what you see on the pitch, not. Obviously, what perceived that, yeah. could, you know, on that as well. But I, I would have given it to Sober Thomas after that link dropped off uh, in the business end of the season. He were found out quite a bit. But but I, I thought anything that we tried and did was by Sober Thomas, whether it was his, you know, corners, whether it was his running. And he really, all right, he kind of he ended the last couple of games. But it's really awkward, isn't it, because of the season. But it's almost like he clocked off two games before, Matt. But yeah, the the Birmingham. It's really difficult to give to a guy that were clearly, clearly that right and right I didn't like and and stuff. But yeah, man, I, I think what running his guts off, mate, and just like you were playing the centre forward in some games because we were absolutely desperate. And but and, yeah, and just, when he, I just thought he was a guy that were done, mate, when he went to Blackburn. I, I know he fell out with Thomason, but I, the fans are not accepting that. I remember them early pods we did in this last season. I was thinking. You might as well better be gone because because the crowd are not going to accept him again. And they did, the, mate. The, the, Tom, Oz and his mates were singing the the, the old da, song da, again. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, I felt a bit good, but I know there's people going to be. It's really awkward isn't it, because of what happened and, and the end. But I, I just think Sober Thomas edges it. But I find it really. I mean, obviously, I don't think they're going to have a player this season. Do but can't imagine him getting that now after all. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Do you know? It was the Birmingham game which which I think finished me off with. With Saw, but you know, we came on and he he played like um like a scorned child, if you like, you know, because he'd been dropped and named and and he just I just thought oh maybe and that's the point where I thought oh well maybe there's some truth in this by the way he's he's sort of yeah definitely played yeah. and and that that was really I, I think that's probably what finished me off but I was definitely on it because I thought he was brilliant up until that point Saw, but he played right. better in forty two games or whatever he, he played you know compared to the others in my opinion but. Yeah, it's a, it's a long. No, that's back. fair enough. I think it's valid, mate. I, I genuinely yeah. do think that's it's a valid, um, a valid one. So let's go to the player of the season award. So who is your Huddersfield Town player of the season? The ones that we put up were Mikhail Helic, Jonathan Hogg, David Kasumu, Josh Caroma, Lee Nichols, Jack Rodoni, Brody Spencer, Sorba Thomas, and Tom Lees. Town fans do add their own or can add their own in, and somebody's added in Matos. There was already an option for none, but someone's put noon. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, I don't. I think Craig Noon played for Cardiff, didn't he? But, you know, <laughs> but I think that's an option for no one. Uh, and someone's put Darren Moore, but someone's put Darren Moore for everything that they voted for, and uh, I'm all for that. Uh, I'm, it, I'm absolutely it, all for Darren that. Pettiness, I'll be honest. Yeah. So the winner, and it, and it is a very very easy one. In third place is Brody Spencer with nine point three percent, and I think that's a huge nod to how good Brody Spencer was in sort of January, February, March. And yeah, he did drop off a little bit towards the end, but you know, you expect that with a 19 year old playing, uh, you know, a proper, you know, as, as they break through. And, and to be fair, he's moved right back, left back, center back, wing back, wing back. He's been all over the place and he, he's been magnificent as, as Brody Spencer in second place is Sauber Thomas. So there are still plenty wanted to vote for Sauber Thomas. Unfortunately, it was only 11.1%, but he did still, 
come in in the silver medal position and with 73 percent of the vote is Mikhail Helik and can can you guys name the last player that won back-to-back player of the season awards for Huddersfield Town? Ooh, I'm going to guess at Jordan Rhodes. Uh, I think Christopher Schindler did it both years in the Premier League. Ah, Schindler, of course, yeah. Yeah, so Schindler. So, you know, he's in good company as Mikhail Helik there with, uh, with in terms of centre-backs. Right, so let's move on. I think it's worth pointing out that as we get into the games for the season, Town did look a little undercooked to me when, when they first came in. I mean, Plymouth we seemed to run out of steam in that first sort of 60 minutes. And it was a really weird game, wasn't it? I know Cosy mentioned all the wind and rain and stuff in uh, Cornwall, but we had it in Plymouth as well at the start of August. And it was, you know, it was sunny one minute, then it was gale force next minute, rain next minute. And I went down to Plymouth and I actually had a really good weekend down there. It was a, it was a nice, a nice, nice weekend apart from the result, but it was kind of like, a poor start. We we had that really poor start where everybody left it to everyone and they scored early doors and it was always going to be difficult. And then we came into the game, Helix scores his first of the season. And then we were probably the better team until we made a silly sort of individual error where Roman Edmonds Green's, you know, back in the stand, you know, I don't know if he's going to the toilet or whatnot. And Barley Mumba sort of like runs through, doesn't he? And he isn't really tracked very well by Tom Edwards or Sauber Thomas and he just he just slots in and then they score quickly afterwards and that's a, a theme that we see quite a lot during the season is that when we concede one we concede another very quickly which you know gives you that little hint that there is maybe a mental frailty to uh, this Huddersfield Town side and that Plymouth game did sort of like ring a, a ring sort of maybe give you a couple of um, not so much home truths, but it did sort of like quell that playoff talk very quickly that people may have thought, you know, that back then, or oh, the euphoria of Neil Warnock coming back. And I do remember uh, us doing a a, um, a preseason preview and then sort of saying we're, we're going to struggle to stay up. But we, me and Cosy both sort of said 20th because I think we were too gutless to say we'd finish in the bottom three. <laughs> um, Pozza absolutely Some nailed it in 23rd did. place. Yeah, Pozza nailed <laughs> it in 23rd we place. We have one up for the season, Matt. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We just based around that for me. Simple as that because the evidence, the squad, and mm. the fact we were, we were pretty much a miracle to stay up. And what have we done to improve it at the time of recording the first pod? And very little. I mean, now. we let like 30 players go, didn't we, across the teams over the summer and then replaced them with four. And it just seemed crazy. I mean, we go into the next game, Town played Middlesbrough in the League Cup and nobody, I mean, we get knocked out in the first round of the League Cup every year for fun, don't we? And But this one, it was a, a young a young team that did quite a reasonably good job against Middlesbrough. They lost 3-2, okay, but they played with 10 men for, for 80 minutes because Headley got sent off quite early. So it wasn't actually a bad performance and Kean Harrett scored quite early in that one as well. And it wasn't bad. And the Leicester game which followed was, was, was a really, really good performance. And that's where you kind of, I mean, we lost the game and, and there were two ways I, f- I felt weird about this game because on one hand, it was a really good performance. But on the second, I was slightly worried that I know Leicester will win the league. At the point, we all knew Leicester would win the league because they got Huddersfield away first for their first away game. It's just the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but we knew Leicester were going to be good. But there was still that little little thing in the back of my mind where, where I was sat there going, you know, we've played at 100% maximum capacity there. Never looked like scoring. And we've lost, lost the game. <laughs> yeah, we've lost the game and we haven't looked like scoring, but it was against Leicester. Uh, so there was that there. And I mean, Lee Nichols probably should have done better on the goal, shouldn't he? I think he can probably, I think he'll probably admit that himself. And then we've got the Middlesbrough game. Uh, Borough started poorly in the league. Um, again, we got a goal up, but faded with 30 minutes left. It's becoming a thing already. And I mean, Neil Warnock can talk about pubs and golf and make jokes of it, but the proof's there really early that with 30 minutes left in quite a few of these opening games, we've we've fallen away. And whether that's mental, physical, we don't know at this point. But the Norwich game was really poor after that as well. And August under Neil Warnock ended up being really, really poor. Uh, we lost 4 0 at home. David Wagner, who I thought was treated disgracefully by Norwich fans all season, uh, without any respect, and made me quite angry at points over the season in how disgraceful they were towards a legend of Huddersfield, uh, who got a, a, a quite an average team in the playoffs and then lost his job. But there we go. But anyway, they they beat us 4 0, and uh, August didn't look great because it really didn't. You know, we we hadn't won a game. 
we'd uh, picked up an odd point here and there. We knew it was going to be a tough start, but were you sort of sat there thinking, oh, this is going to be a long, long season, or, we, or, or did you still have any hope at that point? Were they, again, just a warm-up factor, mate, and the fact the window the window shut at the end of August, or I can't remember, but were Berg's all game before that? Yeah, it was game? in. I can't remember. Uh, Berg's, yeah, Berg's, I don't think Bergsog started his first game until mm. West Brom, did he? But I think he came in quite late. I think he was, it wasn't a Warnock signing anyway. I think he was ushered in around the back of Warnock, so to speak. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think the thing is, as well, Matt, is like, you know, it's, it's really weird when, when you're in countless relegation battles, you just want to start the season, even if you end up kind of moving down the table. You want, you want, you, you don't think, oh no, here we go. Remember, I remember going to that boy and Barrow because my friend, a Norwich fan, and uh, we were buzzing, obviously, but he would just say how bad we were rather than how great they were. And I think that, that yeah, was a huge uh, kind of worry as well for me, Matt. And uh, just because since the fan base were like, we're in for so, But again, I can't emphasise enough because we have Neil Warnock. You always believe we'd have there'd be three worst teams who know us. And, uh, but it's, I just, couldn't be asked with another relegation battle, Matt. You know, I think it's incredible to see you talking there, but some people have maybe said players. I don't know who they were, but yeah, yeah. we were all hoping maybe for a comfy mid-table, but at that early stage, you know, we were... I, I thought, to be fair, they looked quite a decent team, but it turns out that maybe they weren't as good as they looked, but yeah, we, we looked in a bit of a mess there, and that pretty much was sure. Yeah, and um, one person that wasn't shy of saying so was Kevin Nagel after the Norwich City game. And that tweet from Kevin Nagel, and, and I mean, the club can say whether it's true, not true, but you know, it, it seems pretty clear that that tweet was the was the start of the snowball, which um, or the first domino, if you like, which ended with Neil Warnock being knocked over at the end of it. Um, so, it, I mean... On one hand, you think, do you know what, an owner should be professional, should um, maybe keep some things in-house. And then on the other, you kind of think, well, it's his club, maybe he can say what he wants. But th- there's probably somewhere in between, Pause, you think? Whereas I think, if, yeah. if you live by the sword, you die by the sword with someone like Neil Warnock. If you call Neil Warnock out, He's going to give you a super. Yeah, it's not going to be right up, is it? I think no. I think you're quite right, Matt. I think as an owner, and again, it comes back to probably a little bit of naivety at that point for Kevin Nagel, a little bit, a little bit of yeah, he's been involved in in soccer, in inverted commas, over in uh, America, which is a totally different beast over here to to what it is. And you know, our fans. Don't you say that again? You upset him last time you said that. <laughs> I did, but I think it's true, and I, I would, I would still, I you know, I'd still argue that point with anybody that you know, the clubs over there are new; they haven't got generations and generations of support, and they haven't got that yeah, kind of different. like affinity. And I think he was very naive in the fact in his tweet, you know, a total dropping by Norwich City, unacceptable. Supporters deserve better. I believe the squad is better than this. And again, it just goes back to. What were he actually told? What were he told he were walking into when he were buying the club? If he thought the squad were decent, and he's seen what the the first four four games there, and we've you know picked up one point on on paper that looks terrible. Um, well, but I'll stop you there. When you look at it, because... I'll just sorry, Matt, I just I was just going to say Go that on. were against Leicester, Borough, and Norwich, who well finished in top eight at the end of the season, so it weren't an easy start. Plymouth, okay, were down there, but they were flying. They just come back, and yeah. and in in Warnock's defence, there, your first four games. For a team that's probably going to struggle, you know, it's obviously it's not great result wise, but it's not really a surprise. So again, it just comes back to that naivety of what were Nagel told by who when he were walking in. If Neil Warnock and Ronnie Jepson have said we've got a playoff squad, and then that happens, you can understand where that tweet comes from. Well, I was going to, I was just going to say, in, him, yeah. in York last night, they they were pretty adamant that Huddersfield would have finished in the playoffs had they stayed. So. Which I, I I don't believe that for a second, but I don't I don't at all. <laughs> it, it's interesting though because you know because he mentioned two or three times in yourself as well, Matt, that you know you put us in twentieth because of Neil Warnock, and you look and you think about it, and maybe because times pass, but a Neil Warnock for ten games is a different kettle of fish to Neil Warnock for forty six games, isn't it? Because he's one that can come yeah. in and pick people up. Can he continue that? For a full season, it, it would have been, you know, we don't know, do we? Um, I think we'd have, we'd have still struggled and, you know, rightly still probably been down at bottom three. But yeah, I think, I think to call, I think to call out Warnock at that point where 
stupid really um and, and as you say it kind of started it kind of we were the beginning to the end really um you know they, they said they were going to do until christmas did nagel need to say anything before christmas no probably not for me so you know did that cost us then in the long run maybe would we have had enough points on board at christmas for him to then go and someone come in and build on it again maybe we don't know um i'm sure that'll be discussed in part two or three or whenever we get to that part but yeah i think now we're just a bit of an ill-advised in the moment tweet that you you may regret sending at this point i think from a couple of things that have appeared in um, that um neil warnock show that he did in york and he had ronnie jepson with him as well i think he and dunn made an appearance um in there but neil and ronnie have, have kind of weren't very appreciative or or weren't very kind about Mark Cartwright, which indicates that maybe the um, relationships at the club were starting to fall apart mm. quite early. So maybe they wouldn't have. Maybe the reason why they didn't last until Christmas was because maybe they'd have been tearing each other to bits <laughs> behind the scenes. I well, don't look, know. We're, we're, we're on. We're on a guess. Well, really. if you're talking about Warnock and Jepson Cartwright as well, probably all three. Kind of wide because it's old. Be some scrap guys. that, wouldn't it? Be some yeah, scrap. it would be a great yeah, battle that, wouldn't it? You'd be better with watching football, watching that. But um, you know, the, the, none of them were probably back down. None of them had ever admitted they were wrong. And and again, this is sometimes where you, you come into it with a foreign owner who's not there. You know, I talk about boots on the ground sometimes. I know we joke about that, but if you're not here as a person, you've got to put your trust in someone like Mark Cartwright to to be able to run the club. And from what it sounds like, from you know what's come out of that interview, that. That kind of didn't go as well as planned. Maybe that, but Warnock, because it always has a, you know, he always uses his right to reply, doesn't he? And his his reply was quite from from bits I know, quite typically cheeky Warnock in terms of him. He was saying that you know he was Kevin Nagel was disappointed, but Neil Warnock said he was disappointed at missing out on a couple of players that had been playing quite well. And the information that I had was that two players that he mentioned or intimated in that actually turned us down because they didn't want to play for Neil Warnock. So he's, he's kind of <laughs> using the truth a little bit, uh, maybe there. And also the, the other thing I heard was that Chelsea wouldn't let us have Omari Hutchison, who went to Ipswich on loan because they didn't want to loan Neil Warnock. A, a Very good, he went team. there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's devastating. Yeah. Wasn't he good as well? Wasn't he absolutely good? Could have gone, um, up or could have gone down on Omari. Good choice, player. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I can't, can't blame the guy. But, you know, that, that reply itself was... Yeah, I remember the... You the could press, see the writing on the wall, couldn't you, mate? I remember the press conference well, Matt, because no one really asked him any questions. And he he said, by the way... So basically, the press conference had finished and he, he says, by the way... And mm-hmm. he, he kind of made... He, he, when it happened, it wasn't like just like, I don't know, Captain Anna asking a question or Steve Chicken or whatever. It was, he, and, and I just thought after that moment, this was the beginning of the end. I really did. I, I just thought it were unprecedented. He made a big headline and... All of a sudden, you just there is a manager not happy. But the, the problem is for me with the Nagel stuff, it, you know that that, that t- I think it was about four fifty nine or something PM. You know, you've yeah, got to count yeah. ten. Yeah. And, and before you tweet, yeah, maybe that's yeah, it goes. And uh, I just as soon as Warnock said that, Matt, I thought, yeah, that that's I don't know how he'd come back from that. There's no window to get anyone in. There's an unhappy manager there. The owner, as he said, I know he tried to play it down, didn't he, a little bit after. But I just thought the right one on the wall at that point there. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I mean, on the pitch, the Warnock side actually turned it around at this point. Yeah, was a, quite was ironic, a, isn't it? I know, there was a, there's <laughs> a really when good... It West Brom, Matt, when, when he's giving it to West Brom fans, it would ace, because we're getting loads of stick on it, because there's obviously big history with him and Gary Megson and all that lot. But yeah. I remember yeah. after the game, Warnock turning around to that stand and giving him some, and obviously Bergs has scored a beauty. And yeah, all of a sudden... Yeah, because uh, that rather game shortly after and that as well. I mean, they were so poor, weren't they? I think we could have yeah. got a podcast team out of that. You know, that could have given the game then. But, but yeah, <laughs> the West Brom one was the one that was just like, wow. Uh, we, we, we were Where did that come from? Them. Yeah. but So then you're thinking, yeah, they're, they're six good points. Easily, they're probably the best win of the season for me, West Brom. I think I brought it for another one, but... When yeah, back no, it was yeah. a great, it was a great, it was a great win that uh, Jack Ridoni's last minute goal, which you know we mentioned Lee Nichols um, would have been disappointed with the Leicester one. Lee Nichols comes out with an enormous credit because he keeps us in mm-hmm. in the game, doesn't he? At the before, death. It? And then we we actually go from a Lee Nichols save from right up to the other end of the pitch with Kean Harrop feeding Jack Ridoni who scores at the 
at the far stick. It's always in slow motion that that goal as well. It's really strange, but you know it's a, it's a great win. Rotherham are still you know you still have to beat a team that turns up. You know we'll beat them two nil and looked quite quite decent. Warnock, I remember went quite an attacking four four two, didn't he? And, it, and that was what I quite liked about Neil Warnock was he knew when to be conservative and he knew when to to put the foot down and. The, the little things that he, he does really well, you know, he, he controls the temperature really well of the fans, of of everybody, apart from Kevin Nagel, obviously. But, it, you know, he, he tends to, you know, he's, he's such a, a good puppet master of what he does and people eat out of his hands and he's, he's, he's phenomenally good at, you know, his man management of of people in general at the club, you know, all around the club. And like I say, he's a, he's a real sort of one-off when you look at the managers these days as well. And, phenomenal but you know you, you get those two wins and you think right we're on track now we're, we're moving up the league i think it was 16th or something at this point and then it gets announced um yeah, we it, it's going to be leaving yeah it, we're going to be leaving i mean it, only town could kind of like fix themselves and then sack the manager <laughs> um it, it just but, oh, man, know, it's and, not the first time is it we've uh, got to we kind of really, from under his own we feet give him, we give him the stoke game which was weird yeah. you know, well, weird that, game was, that game was just it was like real loaded in, wasn't it? It was just rushed yeah, in. It, it was almost like an off. exhibition for yeah. him, yeah. yeah. We had the, we had that Stoke game, but it was the quotes was afterwards as well game. about Darren Moore being after a thorough uh, search. We, we've found Darren Moore. I mean, that, I think Darren Moore had a crap, that, I mean, yeah. I think Darren Moore had a no, it, like a no compete clause in his Sheffield Wednesday contract, which meant he couldn't take a job for the first three months or a few months after he left or something. So that I think he'd just become available technically. Um but they were they were quite you know and that that the famous words from uh, Jake Edwards who is someone I've quite liked this season but you know we're put we're appointed for a position of strength and you know so if words could come back and bite you in the backside yeah. that, that it really was almost sucked. like uh, we won't sleepwalk to relegation one of those yeah. ones. <laughs> I mean only only right. town only people at town can say things like that with confidence and then it completely unravel like that I, I mean it did look like we were pointing from a position of strength didn't it we'd won we'd, we'd seven points from nine we were moving upwards in terms of the table um and then we're bringing darren moore and uh it, it just it, it kind of we win <laughs> we get I don't know, seven from the next 50 or whatever and yeah. it just i mean it, it just it kind of just summed the season up that you know it's not what Jake Edwards said wasn't necessarily not true. It just, with the way things has ha- things have happened, yeah. just have just sort of like spiraled against us. And I've talked to uh, we're talking with uh, Johnny and Killer about the Darren Moore tenure. So we're not really going to go into too much of that. But it just the Warnock thing. It, it promised so much, didn't it, in the summer? And then it was it just fizzled out really quickly. And I think everybody sort of thought. We thought it on the podcast. I think everybody sort of thought it's too soon. It's too soon to let him go to bring someone else in. Well, it, was like, it did say, didn't it? It was going to be Christmas, and I thought that was probably yeah. a bit of an ideal time because it's it's further enough into the season to kind of establish some points on board. It's it's a decent period of time for a new owner to come in and, and have an assessment on you know how things were going and if it were going well and there were nobody else available that's when you could potentially say look you, you know stay on to end of year and and you know we'll get us ducks in a row and then you know everybody goes and we're all friends and you know kind of like you say the fallout started after the tweet and then it were you know the comments from Jepson and Warnock once they'd gone about playoff teams and you know this that, and other and it, it just oh, kind three, of that and was then the other Premier League in three years three, wasn't yeah it? he knew yeah, what he was doing he, he? Just, he knew what it he was came doing. yeah well, of course he does he's not daft is he? it? it it came didn't paint anybody in a good light really um, to be fair but yeah I think the the comments when we got what Darren Moore in it were a little bit it reminded me when we, we appointed Jan Siever and somebody claimed that we'd been kind of following him for years and all this sort of yeah. stuff and it just I Julian get that you've got yeah I get that you've got a new guy in and you want to big him up and then you know you want to make it a thing but saying stuff like that it just heaps pressure on you as a club it heaps pressure on the guy who's taking over and at that point with everything that had happened kind of pre-season it was just another thing to be like what on earth is going on you know he's a new yeah. owner he does he know what he's doing who are these people that are running the club for him do they know what they're doing you've got an owner's mate popping up on social media and 
fans forums asking questions about stuff and you know uh, defending like this and defending I, like I do I, mean, I think he's I think he's all right I think he's I think he's I, I want him on the podcast I, I do yeah, I, think I be, guarantee he'd come on day if you asked him it'd be good fun I reckon I bet he will fun. I bet he will yeah, yeah. Um, but it just all seemed a bit of a circus at that point didn't it it just kind of seemed that everything were kind of running away from a professional football club and how it should be run um, and that kind of continued mistakes were made quite some mistakes time. were made <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. I think we'll we'll probably we'll probably finish yeah. that there. Um, low point of the season is the final award between us. Um, I mean, you can pick from quite a number of of particularly low points. And Matt, we, can going... I just come back to that Dylan Moore thing, mate? Because I've had to pick the quote out because this is the thing that I could not. Yeah, go for it, it, mate. Yeah, go for the, it. The yeah. number of messages I got from Wednesday nights. I know so many of them. We also want to do someone who's playing style fits the squad we have now and the one we will develop together in the future. Darren doesn't doesn't just play an attacking brand of football. <laughs> he has a track record of making teams even more attack minded the longer he works with them. The great words there of Mr. Mark Cats, right? I think Matt's fallen off his chair up here. <laughs> no, I'm putting uh, I'm putting can the can uh, the the fly uh, the fly thing on. I mean, I mean we've had enough like kind of making the move, but but for say that, that's never been done and more. And and it's just like, and I think that was one of the biggest problems that that kind of weighed him down. He obviously didn't get results, but people were some people who obviously don't know like football like we do. They were listening to this and thinking, "Why will we go? Let's warm up maybe long ball. Let's get some attacking foot." And I just thought, "Wow, I can't believe he said that." And it, that, it, we just used as a, a millstone around his neck from from the start. And it's, Stupidity from cats like that. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's it, lies. And that's lies. It, it it just looked like we hadn't done our homework properly, did we? On on that one, because yeah. everybody knew. Everybody knew. I mean, people who'd, who'd seen a Darren Moore team before knew he'd had all those riches, if you like, at Sheffield Wednesday, and they still played a three four one two, but it still wasn't attacking. Um, you know, you can you can have an attacking formation, but it doesn't make you an attacking team. Um, but. Anyway, you know uh, what, though, I'll, I'll hold my hand up. I, I remember saying on the pod at the time, I, I thought it maybe was the right time to to make the switch from Warnock. And obviously, I've got all the hands up. Well, I don't, I don't have to call my hands up. It's fact, and it? it was a totally wrong decision. But I, I just felt it was. I mean, you to be fair, Matt, you said it at the time, and and, and we're consistent with it that he it just it's just not the right point for the seal town. You said it at the time. I, I think I said it maybe might be a bit of a coup, which was mad, but. I think <laughs> you I think, did. I know, man. <laughs> Honestly, you don't need to look back on any previous episodes. I'll admit it now. Oh, but dear, oh, that dear. when you stopped drinking, because uh, that must have been the reason. That's why. <laughs> that, that was the that brought the camels back. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. So let's let's do the low point of the season. Um, as always, town fans uh, put their own in there, which is which is great. And there's some good ones, which I think Cosy will definitely laugh at, but that I'd forgotten about. Um, so I, I thought Neil Warren at leaving might might win this. That's why I've timed it um at this at this point throughout the the season. So uh number one, not signing a recognized striker in the summer transfer window. Uh Neil Warnett leaves after three games, losing nil four to Cardiff and four one at Elland Road in the same week. Uh the handball at Bristol City. Town losing four nil at home to Swansea in a must win game. Town being relegated after a non-effort at Ipswich, all of them is someone's put. So <laughs> the, these are what town fans have added. All of them shipping loads of goals around Christmas and the running. Honorable mention to Nagel's January diary videos. David Kasumu and or ninety percent of the team simply cannot pass a football more than three yards. I promise that wasn't me that put that, but I do say that on a <laughs> weekly basis. Uh, the draw at home to gain, the draw at home against Birmingham is one that someone's put. Someone's also put being in a position of strength to appoint a great manager and going for a bang average option. Uh, the Preston capitulation, which was quite painful. Yeah. QPR away. Capitulation versus West Brom, who couldn't register a shot on target in the first half. Someone's put appointing the Erminator, which I believe is Darren Moore. Uh, players not putting enough effort in in numerous must-win games. The sacking of Darren Moore, someone's put. There's definitely someone's uh, having a, a Darren Moore laugh here. And one it's which Cozzy will... Must be. Yeah. <laughs> and, and one which Cozzy will, will definitely appreciate for low point of the season was the light show. 
So, oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I forgot, I forgot, I forgot about that. completely about that light God, show. Yeah. I I was outside the ground when it when it was actually happening, and and I was like, and it just looked like someone turned the floor. Like, <laughs> That's basically what it was. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Me right. and you, we've got. I keep Nothing, up I mean, we've got big lights above his head. If, me and you just turned our lights off now for a couple of minutes. It'd just probably like, be better. Should we light show? Should we just go? Wait, hang on, hang on. Here we go. Look. <laughs> That's what it was, mate. Basically, that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's worth a shot in it. If it's if it's good, though, people will take the piss, and that's what yeah. dickheads like us go to. <laughs> so, right, low point of the season. What are you going for, Cosy? Mine were Preston, mate. It's just a personal Preston. choice because I just felt that. I'll get it. Get it. I, the way we collapsed, I remember coming there with, you say, a friend of the pod, former pod man, Neil Wayne. I remember we were done. We, he just, Neil just said, we're done. And I just thought, we've done. I just I just didn't think we had another. It was just a complete meltdown. Like, you know, we were in the game and all of a sudden, you know, they're just the way we just threw in the towel. I just didn't see us coming back from that. And I think if I'm right in saying when it swung to it, oh, sorry, it's come on. Uh, that was, I think it was quite close to was, the Leeds play. game, wasn't it? Was it just after the Leeds game, Preston? When we'd, we'd, we'd sort of scrapped, oh, mm-hmm. am I thinking of someone else? Or am I thinking of Cardiff? That was Cardiff, wasn't it? I just thought, um, yeah, the way, way we fell apart then, I just thought that's just one fella. One, yeah, one, do you know what? One. That was it. We we played Millwall and got that last minute winner against Millwall. And then yeah, we, we followed that up. That. Yeah, yeah we like followed that up with Preston, didn't we, on yeah. Tuesday after going 1-0 up. Yeah, that yeah. was... That I think that was it for me. It's almost like it's confidence, but maybe it would have fraudulently to kind of put up because it was obviously a late win and what have you. But the celebrations, everything, and that, and it would like it never happened like three days later. And I just thought, I just don't see us coming back from that. And that was something I did get right for a change on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pause. What do you reckon, low point? Getting beasted by Nagel on Twitter for you or anything? No, I, mean, I quite enjoyed that, to be honest. Um, it's got to be leads for me. Ellen Road, forward. That was bad, that one. That, that's, yeah. I've, you know, you're always proud to support your club, aren't you? But I think at that point, that's probably the most embarrassing. I mean, fifty percent of I, I would I would say at least fifty percent of town fans left before half time. It was yeah, that oh, streaming out, absolutely streaming out, mate. Yeah, I think I think I mean, as well because before yeah. really, all the ticket fiasco had happened and all that stuff. Yeah, that were a complete mess. Wasn't it? They didn't really need didn't really need that. And then you just you just went and don't get me wrong. If you ask everybody who went, it, I, I can't imagine anybody went expecting to win. But you you always go with a bit of hope, don't you? Especially in a local derby and just to put a a performance in like in like that in that first half and Tom Edwards. That's Probably the, the worst performance I've ever seen from any professional footballer, really. And it just you worse just than uh, Steve Baker away at Tranmere in 1999. I don't remember that one, Matt. Because he might remember Steve <laughs> Baker in 1999, but I'm not sure if, if you will. But no, that just to be just the fact that we're at Ellen Road and there's you know there's 30 odd thousand Leeds fans just basically just laughing at you. Um, you know, actually, Leeds fans. Fans, yeah. Leeds Edward fans. Oh well, there were a point where Leeds fans were chanting for Darren Moore because that's the just it was that bad you know they were just happy that he was there and you know we were just, we were calling him all sorts and they were singing Darren Moore's Barmy Army and it was just just yeah, turned into a circus man we were one of them he yeah. just walked away and it were like I say it was probably the most embarrassing defeat that I've ever been been involved in with town and we've had some shockers haven't we so yeah it would be me for that I know you've put the Cardiff game in there with that but just just for yeah, me, it was just, just I mean it was the first week, half I mean, Leeds. Yeah, it were a bad week. Losing eight one during that week just, was just a it's bit terrible, isn't it? Oh yeah. eight nil, was it eight nil or eight one? Um, scored a leader and El- Elick scored, mate, you know. Just yeah. Elick. Again, again, again. Right, so I guess you'll want to know the result of that. So let's have a look for low point of the season. Right, so one vote for the capitulation at West Bro- against West Brom, one vote for the light show, one point for the Erminator, one point for QPR away, one for Preston, only one point, for, only one for Preston's capitulation, uh, one for players not putting the effort in, one for David Kasumu and the non-passers, one for the sacking of Darren Law, uh, one for being in a position of strength, uh, one vote for the draw against Birmingham. Millwall it was that we won. Did I say we beat Birmingham and then Preston? It was Millwall, wasn't it? I can't remember. Uh, shipping loads of goals around Christmas got one. All of them got two votes. Uh, not signing a recognised striker, four votes. Town being relegated after Ipswich in a non-effort was five votes. And then we've got a bit of a top four, and I'll switch to uh, the percentages for the top four of the lowest point. 
in fourth place is losing 4-0 to Cardiff and 4-1 at Elland Road in the same week. It gave us the great gift of the Chris uh, Chris Green vlog, though, did did that. Yeah, that was, that was a highlight of that match, I think. Yeah. <laughs> God bless Chris. And, uh, and do you know what? I feel sorry for people like Chris because they travel literally to every game and they have done mm. for like last two years and they spend so much money following Huddersfield Town and get so little in return sometimes. And, you know, and he was quite excited to get relegated. And I think he took a lot of heat for that. But, you know, when you're traveling up and down the country, losing week in, week out, I can't blame someone for having a little bit of excitement that we might win a few, well, he might what, see his team win a few games. So, you know, if you, if you do. Might. Come on. Be never do yeah, I mean, might. I mean, we thought that when we came down for the Premier League, didn't we? Uh, but anyway, I just wanted agree. to give Chris his, his, his flowers for, for traveling yeah. up and down the country. No, I agree with it. Uh, third place was Neil Warnock leaving after seven games. In second place was Town losing 4 0 at home to Swansea in a must win game. And that was mine. Uh, I just felt we needed to come out and beat Swansea. And we were so pathetic that it just mm. it just broke everyone's heart, didn't it? Uh, the winner, though, is the handball at Bristol City. Um, that's a bit pathetic, I think, to be honest. But Which I'd, I'd like to think it's not specifically the handball itself, but I think the result, I think, really I think the result and the equaliser in the 101st minute for an absolute, what was essentially an absolute shafting of a decision. Um, I, I it was that point where I knew we were going down. I think, um, and I think I'd like to think that that's why people have voted for for that bit there because I think at that point we knew we were on the way down and even though the Swansea one we had to win even if we'd have beaten Swansea we still could have gone so mm. it is unfortunately what it is uh, and do you know what Cosy I think one this is the world on the road and you getting destroyed by pretty much everybody um, which, which which was such anyone, a shame so want in, uh, Kilroy, it? <laughs> yeah so I think what we'll do now is this Hold this bold man responsible. Posa, the man. Can I just say you could have warned me about that? It scared me to death when you played that music. <laughs> I, because you got away last time you were on the podcast, you got away with a, a lot of help beating Cosy last time. So I've picked the um, the what of what we're going to have the questions on. I'm, I'm getting my words mixed up here, but we are going to do Spanish football. So, oh, Cosy yeah. has a big chance here to either look like a complete phallus as a, uh, you know, if he loses, being a Spanish football expert, or he can get some self-respect back. Right, okay, so who's going first? Uh, Paul's going to go first. <laughs> I'll go first, mate. Why not? Fantastic. Um, no one will ever know what we're laughing about. <laughs> Right, okay. So easy or hard, pause if you're going first. Easy. <laughs> it depends what we're talking about, mate. Now question. <laughs> I'm gonna go easy. Barcelona threw a pig's head at this Portuguese Real Madrid winger yeah. as he was preparing yeah, yeah. to take a corner in an El Clasico after his forbidden move to the arch rivals from the capital. That's gotta be Luis Figo, isn't it? Yeah. One nil, <laughs> one nil to the ogre. Cosy, are you going easy or hard? Hard, mate. Oh, he's confident with this. This Dutch defender arrived at FC Barcelona in the same season as compatriot Louis van Gaal, the club's new coach. He played more than 170 league games for Barcelona. Ooh, Dutch defender. I don't know what I'm thinking about you. I don't think he played that many. Uh... Ronald Koeman, is it? Let's have a look. I don't think it is. Do you know what? I can't even see it because the light here. <laughs> well, of I, that, that would have been my answer. I've, I've like got that. an idea of who that might who it might be, but I'm not entirely sure it is. Right, Barcelona through a pig's head. So this one is Michael Reisiger. I'm going to oh. say Reisiger and all. No, I didn't think he played that many. Sure. Shit, that's a bad head of that. Idiot. <laughs> um, no right. Cos, uh, Pozza, you going easy or hard? I'll go easy again, mate. 
This long-time defensive legend at Real Madrid won five championships and three Champions League titles with the Spanish Royal Club. Despite playing further back on the pitch, he was extremely dangerous in front of goal, providing as much by scoring 21 league goals in the 91-92 season, as well as for a while being in the Spanish national team, being the Spanish national team's all-time top scorer. They play for Bolton. I don't know who that is. Play for Bolton, play for Bolton as well. Yeah, that was when they went through the crazy spell in the nineties, wasn't they it? Same like JJ Cotter and all them. What? Yeah, actually, no, it was the two thousands when they signed him. Oh, I don't know. I had Sergio Ramos in my mind. I don't know if, if that's even. Did he even play for Real Madrid, Sergio Ramos? I don't know. Um, he did, but a few years ago, not in ninety one, ninety two. No, no, it's a bit, a bit early, isn't it? I just that's my first, that's my uh, go to. Uh, sort of Spanish defender. Oh no, no idea, mate. Going back that to nineties. Fernando Hierro. Oof, no. Cosy, you're going easy or hard? Never heard of him. Hard, mate. Here we go. Second penalty. Twice named Serbia's best footballer, this attacker was part of the Valencia team who won the Copa del Rey in 2008. Say it again, Matt. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, twice named Serbia's best footballer, this attacker was part of the Valencia team who won the Copa del Rey in 2008. Speed you up. Yes, no, no, no. Birmingham City legend Nicola Zigic. Wow, right. Pause, you going easy or hard? Easy, mate. Easy. This elegant Brazilian has scored a string of fabulous goals. In 2001, the attacker secured FC Barcelona a place in the following season's Champions League when he bagged a magnificent hat trick against Valencia. The last of which was a spectacular bicycle kick from the edge of the box. Oh, I remember that. Well, it's probably Ronaldinho or Ronaldo, I'm guessing. I'm going to go... Or neither. <laughs> or neither. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really think of any other Brazilian strikers at Barcelona. My Spanish knowledge isn't that good, you know. Um, well, it's obviously not one of them two. <laughs> um Think of uh, when you say it, I'll, it'll come back to me, but no, mate. Uh, yeah, think of 2002 World Cup and who was a complete knobhead for uh, diving after being reckoning he was hit by the ball in the face when he hit him. Uh, Rivaldo, yeah, unfortunately, I can't give you that. No, I don't give it out, you could be easy, yeah, Forgot right? Cosy, easy or hard? Hard again, mate. Still going, still persisting. Um, this striker scored 122 goals in 300 La Liga matches. The vast majority scored while playing for Valencia and Getafe. He was less prolific in the Premier League, netting only seven times for Tottenham. Hey, I know this. Yeah, Roberto Soldado. Yeah, that is it. Roberto Soldado. Even I knew that. Uh, Soldado. So, Cosi goes 2-1 up. Penalty four. Easy or hard? Pause. Uh, Easy. This Spanish goalkeeping legend... Oh, this is easy, mate. This Spanish goalkeeping legend won La Liga's best goalkeeper twice with a stunning... 155 European matches for Real Madrid. No other player has represented the club in Europe more than this Madrid icon. Ilka Casillas? It is Ilka Casillas, yep. Yeah. So we're at 2 2. Cosy Bear? I am away. I mean, uh, ah, sorry. <laughs> it's not a question of the Long You look knackered, isn't it? <laughs> This left back broke through for Deportivo before moving on to Villarreal, where his strong performance made him a regular starter for the incredible Spanish national team. Out of Spain's starting lineup for the 2010 World Cup final, he was the only one not playing club football for Real Madrid or Barcelona. Villarreal left back, did you say? Don't know him, eh? Okay. Juan Capdevia. Yeah, okay, we're into the final question. It's two. So <laughs> you're going easy or hard? I'll go easy, mate. Okay. Ooh, this could be difficult. This keeper had his big breakthrough when he moved from Real Madrid to Valencia. He went on to win two Spanish championships with Los Che and has been La Liga's hardest goalie to beat on several occasions 
with four Zamora titles to his name. I can't believe Bobby Zamora's got his name in Spanish football. <laughs> he missed the World Cup in 2002 after he cut himself on a broken aftershave bottle. I kind of know who this is. Uh, I remember that. I do. That World I do Cup know thing. But I have no idea who it is. I can't remember the name, mate. Sorry. No? Think of Capital of Chile. In fact, think of... Um, it's not going to help. <laughs> think of... It's uh, it's uh, Caniz- uh, Santiago Canizares. Uh, uh, no, mate, I want to go that. Right, Cosy. To finish it off, easy or hard? Uh, this midfielder came to Real Madrid from Boca Juniors, joining the club alongside compatriot Gonzalo Higuain. He played four seasons in the Capital Club before being loaned to AS Roma and subsequently moved on to Valencia. His only goal for Los Blancos came in a defeat against Sevilla. Who is it? I should know this to be honest. I'm not quite sure. I don't know this. Yeah. Uh, uh, big, uh, oh, it's going to kill me when you say it. Who is it? Well, his sister's doing pretty well in the pop charts from the last 15 years. Oh. His sister, Lady. No, oh, mate. Gaga. Fernando, Fernando Gaga, yeah. Oh, I don't know that, mate. Uh, right, well, Cosa, easy or hard? In the, you're probably. in sudden death. I can't uh, believe you're taking, you're taking Cosy to sudden death on Spanish I football. Know. I've got to get up for work soon. Uh, R5. Uh, R5, that's what I'm getting up. <laughs> I'm doing a Cosy. Uh, oh, easy, mate. This versatile goal-scoring Dutchman had a hammer of a shot and scored lots of goals in his six-year spell at FC Barcelona. He has since coached multiple Premier League clubs as well as Barcelona. Dutch, did you say? Is it left foot? Oh no, it didn't. This versatile goal scoring Dutchman had a hammer of a shot and scored lots of goals in his six year spell at Barcelona. He has since coached multiple Premier League clubs as well as Barca. Coached Premier League clubs. So not managed, just, just been there as a coach. Uh, he's been head coach, yeah. That's what they mean. Has he been head coach? Been, yeah, he's been in England as well. No, mate, I'm coughing. Ronald Koeman. Oh, I said him for earlier answer, didn't I? I was going to guess that just because that was the only person I could think of. <laughs> Cosy, <laughs> easy or hard? Easy, man. Oh, he's, he's, he's had to lower his expectations. This Catalan tactician got his big breakthrough in Johan Cruyff's side in the early 90s and helped to win six championships for FC Barcelona. Post-playing career, he has coached FC Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Manchester City with great success. Oh, come on. Say that again, Matt. Sorry, I won't concentrate. <laughs> Coach, bald. <laughs> Coach, bald, Spanish. <laughs> Pep Guardiola, yeah. yeah. Right, so Cosy wins. Um, right, guys. Uh, tap uh, in there. I think that was expected, wasn't it? I can't believe he got Pep Guardiola. That was like the, the ultimate easy question. But it's actually nice to see the easy questions actually having easy answers because we've had some shockers, haven't we, with the, the easy and hard nature of some of these. Right, guys, before we go, um, I just thought I'd grab your thoughts on Kevin Nagel's first 12 months as Huddersfield Town owner. What have you made to it? Because, do you want to go first, mate? Yeah, when we you, mate. You're his best friend, aren't you? <laughs> you know what, mate? I like the guy. Deep down, you know, I like the guy. He's hard not to like, in it? But ultimately, we started off in a championship under Kevin Nagel and we're now in League One. But uh, stuff like what's in the stadium under his control does excite me a little bit. I know a lot of people have been not bothered about that and it's all about, you know, it's not technically done yet, is it? But they reckon it's nearly done. But yeah, just obviously the academy, uh, going back, coming back as well. I think that's a really stepping out direction. So there's, a few things that obviously takes a bit of time to come in. That that's really good. I must admit, it's, it's up to him how he runs his business. I'm not a great fan of the video diaries. I know some people will, you know, you moan about people not communicating, but I just think there were too many of them. I just think there were too much talk, and yeah, we need to see a little bit more action as well. I like the fact he backworded on the season cards, uh, yeah. which again. How he's got there, who knows? Uh, you know, but he has got there and 
he'll have a good fan base on board next season. He just seems a good guy, to be honest with you, and that, and that as well. But it's he's made mistakes, but who's not going to matter, you know, just as a new owner coming into the club. Uh, it does shock me that some of the people that he speaks to on Twitter, I'm not just saying you, Bob, but like there's others, it's... That one's it's no, anyway, I suppose if people are having a go of copying him in or stuff like that as well, fair play to him and he comes back and that as well. Him and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. take any nonsense, does he? That's... No, and no. I, I did like the stuff at the start, you know, obviously when, when he was having a pint in the town centre and obviously the Masters thing was documented, but ultimately we are a division further down, but then at the end of the day, he surrounded himself with people who we thought, you know, were the right men, and he means back to him and that, that was obviously on the, the end of the year one that he's just done. Uh, he really has nailed his colours to the uh, Edwards and Cartwright master, and I hope he's rewarded for that. I mean, we all do, don't we, in that as well, but, you know, it's, I don't, it's hard not to like the guy, even though we've been relegated, and that's why I'm there next season, and, and you know, it's got... It just talks cheap, though, in the end and that as well. We need to see some action, and I think he does know that. But, yeah, less video of Diaries for me next season. Hopefully more wins. That is a given and that as well. And I just hope he gets a bit more lucky with a lot of them signings got injured as well. That was the thing that we have to shout out as well. There's so many injuries who were very unlucky. That made us wonder, you know, if it's VC was fit and, you know, all the gentlemen a bit. But it's some buts. But it's really weird, normally... He's come in, we've been relegated, and you should absolutely go nuts with the guy. But I find it hard to map because he's guys mm-hmm. out in the right place, and I just hope he's rewarded next year, mate, next season. Fair enough. Uh, pause. Yeah, I think very similar to Cos. I think on the field, uh, I think you've got to say it's been an absolute disaster, hasn't it? We've we like we you know, we started in Championship, we've gone through three managers. Um, the squad is absolutely nowhere near. The level it needed to be at, we we wasted a lot of money on players that quite simply haven't performed. Um, a lot of them players. Yeah, like you might have said out. that before about the squad not being good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I might have mentioned players it once or twice. Yes. Um, but I also agree with Cosy. I think off the field, I'm, I'm excited for the academy. I think that's brilliant. I think that's something that's been lacking. Yeah. Um, the Love the murals as well. Murals coming in. Yeah, and stuff, stuff like, like that. that's yeah. good. If he's wanting to take control of the stadium, I still, I don't know why, but I still have this little nagging doubt as to why. Why is he involved in Huddersfield Town? He's never really come out and said why he wanted to own a football club in England and why specifically Huddersfield Town. Is it just a business opportunity? Is it because he just likes to be in charge of sports teams? Whatever the reason may be, um, you know that that's probably personal to him. You know, I'm not I think, I think they just became available. Uh, didn't they? I think he was in the market and became yeah. available. Uh, you know, if he, if he's putting his money in and you know he's not expecting any anything back immediately, then you know fair play to him. I just think that this this season could have gone a lot better if he'd have just kind of, you know, is American without, you? without well, not so much exactly that, but just just maybe calm down a little bit. He, he reminded me of an excited kid. You know, he part a football club and he was shouting his mouth off. He's going to do this and other, but you know, with, with no disrespect to American people, that's kind of how they are, isn't it? And a part of it likes that mean, because he's he's coming back fair, fighting. Phil, you know, Phil Hodgkinson and Dean Hoyle both did that as well, didn't they? they both yeah, both yeah, they did. But I just I just think that they probably did it from a more informed position than than what Ooh, than what Nagel did. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just think good luck to the guy. You know, ultimately, if he's successful, I'll be happy. We'll be happy. So you know, all the best to him. Hundred um, percent. But everyone's he, willing. Him nobody on, can sure. claim that we're a, it was a good season because it won. Um, but if he learns from it and it puts us in good stead. And it, you know, three years down the line, we're you know we're back where we need to be with a much better yeah. you know overall club. Then fair play to. And last thing, thoughts on Michael Duff as new manager? Yeah, quite happy with that, mate. From what I've, from what I've read and what I've seen, uh, I don't think there'll be anybody out there that we could get better for where we are. So I just hope. I think I said this when Carlos Corbran came in. I think I like and the club to a lasagna at one point we're having different layers and since then you Kevin know, lasagna. Eight foot, it's eight foot Kevin. tall now isn't it because we've had that many <laughs> but yeah I just hope we can actually see how his buddy contract do you know what I've got behind us. you uh, speaking of lasagna look who I've got here if you can see that on YouTube oh Garfield uh, yeah. yeah I hope he can just be in post for more than you know a third of a season <laughs> and we you can let, really, you really start to build mind, something just, you? yeah, you're, not, you're not built for the Watford model are you no, I like a, I like a good at least eighteen months. Cos round us off about Michael Duff. Yeah, I've got to be honest, mate. When we were in the running uh, last season, 
over to Adam Moore. I, I will take him down more, and that obviously went well as well. But yeah, I do think it's uh, definitely the the guy that the best that we could have got. I know a few Barnsley fans who really were hoping that he'd come back and, as well. And uh, it was kind of ironic. I went to that Swansea other show game, and uh, obviously mm. it was uh, Duff against Moore. <laughs> you know, the so kind of, yeah, the playoff. <laughs> uh, and that was the last game, wasn't it? We saw a few off, didn't we, last season as well. I do like, I've always been a fan of straight talking managers, and I think he's exactly that. I don't think the football will be the most exciting, but you know what, mate? I hate League One with a passion. You know, yeah. knowing I just, next just, three months just want to win games, don't you? Just yeah, there were people I want to say, oh, I can't wait to go to this ground, that ground. I just don't, I'm not interested in it all. I just want to get promotion and I just don't like the fact that... You, you mean know, you're not looking forward to seeing Wickham again, your favourite club? Uh, <laughs> I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, Ipswich took a few years to get out of it and stuff, but I want an yeah, instant promotion. Years, I, want yeah. an, I, want a, I want an instant promotion, mate. And uh, Yeah. yeah. But, but you know what? I just think the guy is... Uh, and Martin Patterson back as well anymore, so that would be interesting. But yeah, remember the uh, old golf... Uh, or the, or the fight in Hillsborough, wasn't it, when he scored, we had him play and all that. But, yeah, no, he's, I think he's definitely the best at what we could have got as, as well. And, yeah, wish him all the best as well. And uh, that was a nice thing, wasn't it? The kind of coming, I've seen, could have been good with a PR, but going in the offices, you know, shaking hands, getting around. And, yeah, and I don't think he's a man to be messed with. He knows what we need to do to get out of that division, uh, mate. So, let's just do like Potter's is, uh, is, sing, is singing Christmas carols with us your town <laughs> he's not gone before then well let's definitely hope so right guys thank you that ends part one and we'll be back with part two with uh, Johnny Gillespie and Mr Kilroy Silk to uh, have a look through the Darren Moore ten. so cheers guys and uh, good luck to them with that come back here come back <laughs> number two don't tell us what not that boring then. please don't <laughs> There's a team that is dear to its followers The colours are bright blue and white They're a team of renown and They're the pride of the town And the game of football is their delight Hands on Upon the field of play Thousands loudly cheer them on the way Often you can hear them say Who can be the town today And then the bells will ring so merrily And every go Shall be a memory So town play up And bring that cup Back to Huddersfield So town play up And bring the cup Back to Huddersfield